Hey, what's up? Gleb Alexandrov here for CreativeShrimp.com. Creative Shrimp is the place where artists learn the tips and tricks about computer graphics, art and coffee brewing. Welcome to yet another Blender. Quick tips! Small things really matter because at the end of the day it really adds up. It allows us to save time and energy, so keep watching. If you haven't watched the previous quick tips, just click on the link in the description. Quick Shrimpy tip number one, denoiser is awesome. Starting from Blender 2.79 we have Denoiser. So let's first render without it. This is one of the test scenes of Blender. You can download it and try for yourself. Now let's switch to the other render slot. Come over to the render layer settings and enable Denoising. I will leave it at the default settings, maybe increase the radius a bit. And what this cool little feature does is just denoise this image. It's a kind of a trade-off between the render speed and render quality because it can blur some areas of the image, but all in all, the difference between these two renders is striking. Okay, the shrimpy tip number two is how to straighten an edge line. It may seem like a trivial task, but actually it's quite hard. Let's select these two vertices, and you can see that the geometry between them is very wavy. Now I'm pressing F to draw an edge between these two vertices. I'm selecting the edge and pressing Shift S, and cursor to selected. So we drew an edge between these two vertices and snapped the 3D cursor to this edge. Now we can select this set of edges, set the pivot point to individual origins, press S and Y two times. And look at this. It will straighten this set of edges according to the normals of the reference edge. And we can do the same for these edges. And for these edges as well. So that's how the edge line could be straightened. Quick and easy. Number three, bevel vertex. Everybody knows that the edges can be beveled by pressing Ctrl B, but the vertices can be beveled as well. The shortcut is Ctrl Shift and B. And you'll get this fancy triangle. Number four, Blender can render in stereoscopic 3D. First, let's jump into the render layers tab. Scroll down and enable the Views checkbox. And in the Views checkbox you'll have Stereo 3D enabled. And in the Camera settings you can play with the Stereoscopy settings, with the Convergence Plane Distance, whatever it is. And after we press F12 to render, you'll get these two sets of images, red and cyan. Welcome to a virtual reality. It's that simple. 5. Depth of Field Aperture Ratio in the camera settings, we have the depth of field settings. We can tweak the size to increase the size of the bokeh effect, number of blades, but also we can tweak the ratio. And a higher ratio means that the bokeh will be stretched vertically. This can lead to a very stylized effect, especially if your scene has some kind of depth to it. Let's try to move this object, and you can see how it gets stretched. So if you have a photographer inside you, you'll be happy. Quick tip number 6. Symmetrize Mesh. This one is pretty simple, you can go to the edit mode, select all polygons, press space, search for Symmetrize and apply the symmetry. And after pressing F6 you can play with the settings. That's it. Number 7. Press G twice to slide vertex. Sliding the vertex means that you change the vertex position according to the edge on which it resides. You can use it to snap vertices together, like this. Or you can type in the numerical value, for example 0 0.5, to move the vertex halfway. But this doesn't automatically collapse the vertices, you have to press W and select Remove Doubles. And now the double vertices are gone. Number 8. You can create UI presets. Presets usually allow us to save some time. Okay, we can click and drag corners to rearrange the windows. And we can collapse windows as well. Like this. So let's create some arrangement. Okay, here I'm gonna open the Adobe Sheet, here the UV image editor. And now I'm pressing the plus icon to create the new UI preset. Now let's create a different preset. Arrange it like this, for example. Hit plus once again. Now we can hold Ctrl and press left and right arrows to switch from one preset to another to quickly scrub through the presets. Another quick tip, how to preview material nodes using the node Wrangler add-on. If you have this add-on enabled, you can just hold Ctrl Shift and click on the individual nodes to preview them. 
We can preview any kind of node, for example, color ramp, and tweak it till we like it. And then, for example, I'd like to enable the preview of the whole material. So hit Control Shift and click on this glossy node. Also, we can select this set of nodes, press Shift P to draw the frame around them automatically, or do many more cool things like press Alt S to quickly switch the inputs, or press Shift S to replace this node with the other node while maintaining the connections. If you don't use this add-on or don't have it enabled for some reason, do it. 10. Blender has the info window. Yeah, yeah, I know you are stunned by this info. Don't be so surprised. So we can click and drag here and open the info window. And pretty much everything we do gets reflected in this window. So, for example, you would like to know the Python code for the command. And, for example, for flip normals. And that's how it looks. Now we can copy it and paste somewhere. One of the cool features of Blender is proportional editing. Proportional editing allows us to edit not only the selection, but the area around the selection as well. We can enable it here. The area of influence can be tweaked using the mouse wheel, right in the middle of the editing process. I'm a big fan of the proportional editing. We can do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. Like, for example, <laughs> these spirals. And this stuff can be even more magical if you use uh, the mouse wheel. And maybe apply a few subdivision surfaces on top of it. It never hurts, you know? Number 12. Draw selection. Often the most convenient way to select vertices is to click C to invoke the brush selection and just brush the selection. Concept artists would love this way to select stuff, I promise. You can deselect stuff by holding Alt C and you can tweak the size of the brush by using the mouse wheel. Uh, the mouse wheel, just like the right mouse button, are used very often in Blender. Blender loves nerdy stuff like this. Okay, number 13. Preview render layers in the viewport. So let's get to the rendered viewport mode. Now go over to the render layers tab. And actually, to be able to preview render layers right in the viewport, we have to enable this button. And now we see the layer 1 visible and everything else pretty much invisible. And we can switch between layers, see the effect in real time. Number 14, how to select the vertex path without having to select each individual vertex or polygon or edge. So you just hold control and click the right mouse button. And that's it pretty much. That's how you select the path of edges, vertices or polygons. Every optimization, everything like this saves you some seconds of your precious time. And by the end of the day, you'll have some extra time for extra coffee. Thank me later. Make sure to leave a tip. Alright folks, the tip number 15 is how to quickly switch to the cycles render. So we can go over there and enable it, or we can just press Shift Z and Alt Z to return back to the solid mode, Shift Z to get to the rendered mode. The seconds, the seconds accumulate. Coffee, all this stuff. 16. How to straighten the UV island. Imagine you have this donut object and you select the area like this. And when we hit U and unwrap it, you see that in the UV image editor the area is not rectangular. It has a curvy shape. And what we have to do to make it rectangular is first of all reset the UV map, then select this polygon as an active polygon and select follow active quads and hit OK. And then what we can do is go over to the UV image editor and scale this island to fit this into the view. And this will produce the perfectly rectangular area. No more weird distortions and stuff. 17. Shift plus space to maximize a window. Oh, that's a cool tip. Still good to know and practice. So, shift plus space maximizes the window. And by the way, do you know why my blog is called Creative Shrimp? Do you know it? If you know it, feel free to write it in the comments. I bet you don't know. No way you could know it. Mm. But do you want to know some more proportional editing tricks? So we explored this thing before. We can enable the proportional editing right here and use mouse wheel to tweak the influence area. Also, we can set it to the connected mode to make it affect only the connected polygons. Or we can use the projected mode or 2D mode 
So in orthographic views, it won't use the depth for calculating the falloff. And another cool feature is the falloff type of the effect. So if you set it to constant, let's see what happens. No more smooth falloff. We can set it to linear, smooth, inverse square. Another fun mode is random. So it applies a slight random transformation to every vertex. And we can tweak the falloff type on the fly by hitting Shift O. And take a look at the hotkeys displayed in the bottom right corner. Okay, the viewport has lens. Like everything else. So hit N. Go to the view tab. And you can adjust the lens. So if you'd like to constrain the field of vision to maybe focus on some particular train, you can select uh, the lens of 70. I don't know. And if you set it to some lower value, like 8, you will get much, much more alien type of vision, which is also fun. And it allows us to see more. Editing polygons while looking through the fish islands is kind of fun. Number 12, rolling shutter. So we have a camera here and we insert the keyframe for rotation. Move the camera, insert another keyframe. So the camera kind of moves between these two keyframes or rather rotates. And if we enable motion blur and set the shutter to 0.1 and render, you'll see kind of classical motion blur picture. But did you know that we can simulate the rolling shutter? Set it to top bottom type, hit F12 and you'll see that the image will get slightly tilted. But the motion blur is gone, let's increase it to 2, render again, and bam! A rolling shutter. Which is considered to be a pretty bad effect in the camera world, but still. Okay, the next thing is light textures. So let's go to the light source nodes, add image texture connected to the color input of the emission shader, and add some texture to it. Oh, damn it. They ring me all the time when I'm recording stuff. Okay, don't forget to plug the normal node into the vector input and crank up the strength of the light source and now we can tweak the location. And as we can see, the light source starts to look like the cinema projector. We just need an interesting texture like this HDR by Greg Zal with my tweaks. 22, bake the combined texture to low poly. That's the last shrimpy tip for today, so hang on. Here we have the Star Destroyer model, which is composed of different parts. Uh, which is pretty high poly, 62,000 polygons. Okay, mid poly. And also we have this low poly model without any kind of textures and we want to bake all information, all texture information from the old model. First of all, I'm creating the new texture in the UV image editor. Secondly, I add the image texture node and selecting this newly created texture, which is just a black rectangle. Next I'm switching on all layers, like this. And I'm selecting everything, then shift and right clicking till I select the low poly model. So low poly model is the active one. And in the render tab, I'm searching for the bake tab, selecting the combine as the bake type. Make sure you have the selected to active checkbox enabled. Okay, now I'm hitting the bake button. Here you can watch the progress. And by the way, I have uh, disabled diffuse glossy transmission in all other rays except the camera rays in the cycle settings tab for the low poly object. And bam, Blender has finished baking process. We can plug it now into the color slot of the emission shader on the low poly model N. So we have baked all the details, including lighting from the high poly models to the low poly one. All right, folks, that was Gleb Alexander for CreativeShrimp.com. Drink more coffee. Check the videos over here, just click on the links or follow the links in the description. Let me know in the comments below what tip did you like most. Drink more coffee and we'll change the world of computer graphics.